All right, it is two o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, my name is Anna Van Brunt. I serve as the Housing Specialist for Mid-America Regional Council. This meeting is being recorded. I am opening this public hearing for the MARC Pro Housing Grant application. This public hearing is required as a part of the application process for the grant opportunity to receive public comments. We have also posted the application to our website and are accepting public comment through October 11th via web form or via email to prohousing at mark.org. Public comments will be summarized as a part of the final, final application submitted to HUD per its requirements. I will provide a brief overview of the application and then open it up for public comments. When providing public comments, please come up to the podium and state your name and organization or the community that you live in. Once you conclude your comments, please write your name and organization or jurisdiction down on the sheet next to the podium. Public comments will be limited to three minutes and you may only speak once. Again, you can also submit comments online or via email to prohousing at mark.org. I will repeat these instructions at the end of the presentation. This opportunity is a part of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development's Office of Community Planning and Development's Pathways to Removing Obstacles to Housing or Pro Housing Grant Program. The purpose of this program is to identify and remove barriers to affordable housing production and preservation. The application is due October 15th of 2024 with an anticipated start date of February 10th of 2025 and a six year period of performance. The minimum funding that will be allocated is $1 million and a maximum of $7 million. Eligible activities are further developing, evaluating and implementing housing policy plans, improving housing strategies and facilitating affordable housing production and preservation. Eligible activities may include, but are not limited to, planning and policy, development, infrastructure, and preservation activities. HUD is prioritizing applications that demonstrate a progress and a commitment to overcoming local barriers to facilitate the increase in affordable housing production and preservation. HUD is targeting communities that have an acute demand for affordable housing and has established priority geographies specific to this funding opportunity. HUD will also look at compelling information about the geography's affordable housing needs. The following is an overview of the process used to develop this application. This included multiple opportunities for stakeholder engagement, including a review of last year's application and feedback from groups involved in the development of last year's application. This included a 2023 local government stakeholder meeting and updating these groups repeatedly about the updates to this application and um, further opportunities for engagement. This also included a review of currently published consolidated plans and currently published comprehensive and supplemental housing plans. Activities under the Regional Housing Partnership work also helped inform the development of this application, including the 2019 Workforce Housing Report, the Community Land Trust Regional Business Plan, the Regional Housing Trust Fund Business Plan, the Regional Developer Needs Assessment, and research on the regional needs of housing through the Regional Housing Data, Data Hub work including the 2024 Regional Local, Local Government Housing Survey. The 2024 Regional Housing Partnership Strategy Committee goal setting process recently concluded and was heavily used to influence the development of this application and its priorities. Based on feedback from HUD and knowing that we must focus the activities of this grant on priority geographies, this application's focus area will be Johnson County, Kansas, as well as communities within the First Suburbs Coalition. Johnson County is the largest priority geography within Mark's nine county region, and the First Suburbs Coalition has a history of coming together around topics and working to implement best practices and policies. The rest of the region will still be called out as major stakeholders throughout this process. The projects in this application include the following. Developing a strategy and program to assist community, communities in reviewing land use policies, zoning codes, and development processes to increase and preserve affordable housing with an aim for implementation and adoption. Harmonizing building codes within the region to foster development and preservation of affordable housing. And finally, funding the development of the Community Land Trust Consortium as described in the Regional Business Plan for CLTs that will provide technical assistance and development for CLTs in the region. Key partners in this application include Habitat for Humanity of Kansas City, Kansas City Community Land Trust, and the Institute for Building Technology and Safety. The federal request for this program is $4,745,075.47. Mark and his partners have 
committed to leveraging $2,781,845.21. This brings our total project budget to $7,526,920.68. Public comments are open now and will close on October 11th. You may submit comments online via our web form or via email to prohousingatmark.org. We will incorporate a summary of these public comments per HUD's requirements in our final application. The final application is due October 15th with an anticipated start date of February 10th of 2025 and a six-year period of performance. Before I open public comments, we will now um, give time to answer any general questions or remarks application. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. Um... In the application, it states that uh, part of the goal of uh, this program will be to uh, connect with other municipal stakeholders in Mark's uh, area. Um, is there any kind of developed plan for what that might look like, or is that part of the work that needs to be done? That'll be part of the work that's done. Um, we plan on consulting with other geographies and creating our plans and creating um, the, any of the materials that come out of this grant program if we are awarded funding. Do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I would say the first Suburbs Coalition is a standing group that we intend to use, but inside of that work plan that's inside of the um, application, it talks about convening stakeholders, so that is still to be determined who would kind of make up that group. Got it. And if I could uh, just uh, follow up on that, a lot of the activities that are listed in the application are things to do with education, things to do with training. Um, of course, Johnson County is the uh, priority geography is the target of this application. Um, is there uh, a sense at this point, I mean, programs have yet to be developed, but I'm just thinking about things like those trainings, things like those education opportunities, might those be open to people who are not connected within Johnson County? Precisely, because we were limited to focusing on priority geography um, by HUD's designation for this for this application process, um, we are looking to open that up to the wider region as we develop materials and have trainings and it will all be available. Just focus on Johnson County, but the rest of the region will be regarded as a stakeholder um, and be able to participate in those. Any other questions at this time? If not, we will now open it for public comments. Um, once again, please state your name and organization or jurisdiction. Um, you're limited to three minutes for public comments and you're only allowed to speak once. Um, please place your name and jurisdiction on the sheet of paper after speaking. And if you're in the chat, if you're in the um, Zoom, please enter your name, organization and jurisdiction into the chat. Um, comments will be summarized in our final application per HUD's requirements. And I will leave this information up for the rest of the public comment period if anybody wants to look at the application. Hello, my name is Laura Mize. I'm with the City of Excelsior Springs, and I'm the chair of the Housing Task Force under Thrive Excelsior. Um, Katie Killen and her team have demonstrated that uh, they are very good at educating and answering questions. They've come out several times to answer questions about community land trust, which is something that our task force is very interested in. So I just want to commend them for already demonstrating that they know how to do the, uh, the education and the training and including an, us as a community that's technically outside the First Suburbs Coalition, but not by very much. And uh, we firmly support that uh, you be awarded this grant and uh, are excited to continue working with you in the future to possibly get a regional community land trust and to include our housing task force and our elected officials in that continuing education of how we can benefit our community through uh, some of these housing best practices. So thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Stephen Collins. I am a project manager uh, with Truman Heritage Habitat for Humanity. That's the Habitat for Humanity affiliate that works on the east side of Jackson County. Um, I just wanted to share my perspective as a person who works for uh, affordable housing um, solutions. And that's, um, I was very excited to read the contents of the application, particularly with 
an eye towards education, uh, focus not only on folks uh, who work in positions like mine, but also in the municipalities in which we serve. Um, I have quite frequently recently been in a lot of public uh, meetings at the city level and also the county level where things like zoning changes come up uh, for discussion. And there is just from my perspective, just from what I've seen, there's just a lot of misinformation, a lot of misunderstanding. And I'm very excited that Mark is taking leadership um, and trying to secure funds for um, to tackle that specific issue, which from my perspective has been too big, nebulous and complicated for any one stakeholder to really be able to make a big impact. Um, so I'd just like to say that um, as a community stakeholder, I uh, fully support this application. Anna, we had a new person join online, just letting you know. We are currently open for public comments. So if there's anybody online that would, want, would like to offer comments at this time, um, please enter your name and organization or jurisdiction in the chat. She's asking them to put it in regardless. So if you can just yeah. and you feel free to go ahead and start um, delivering your comments at any time. Well, I know Emily Hi everyone. I'm so sorry. Um, I if I'm the only am I the only public member here? No. No. Okay. Good. <laughs> so um, there is I a just three wanna... minute. I just want to say there is a three minute. I think you missed the instructions. So there is a three minute time limit. So just wanted to make sure you heard that. Great. Yeah. No. My apologies. So I just wanted to thank everybody who has really been on board with this. Uh, I just moved back to Missouri, um, hence why I'm also not with anybody, but also because I've, I've been really researching like crazy. I uh, have been living in Northern California the last six years working for nonprofits. So cities, counties, uh, everywhere up and down the Bay. Um, I was working for an organization called DCG Strategies. I left them back in 2019. And then I was working independently uh, consulting, still have been, um, with a couple private investors, private equity groups with impact investing. Um, specifically, I think one of the things I I'm more happy with that everybody's on board with this. And I just want to, again, applaud everybody who's taken the time um, to submit this grant and, and given comment because every, as much as all of your jurisdictions and areas are uh, different and have different needs, there's still a huge missing middle um, and a huge, uh, I mean, just huge gap of supply um, for low and middle income housing. So when I say affordable, I mean under 180,000 a year. Um, City of Columbia has been doing a really great job lately with actually doing energy efficient single family homes. And also I'm not talking about rentals. I'm talking about ownership. So when I was doing work in California, I was very fortunate that there was so much community um, traction and partnership. But at the end of the day, it was the, the, the given actual community members um, who owned property currently in some of these areas that were most against some of the housing. So there was uh, Governor Newsom signed legislation that was also um, authored by Senator Weiner, who I know personally out of San Francisco or uh, used to be a city council member. But he basically put the requirement that said, hey, for any missing housing, these areas were, were putting in a moratorium that says you have to build. And I know we don't have that in the in the Midwest region with Mark, um, but I can just say from all the research I'm doing currently, it's it's kind of alarming um, between all the current home builders and what they're not building. So uh, I I know I'm going to be reaching out to all of you individually, 
um, just because I would like to scale the trust model um, more than just 20 houses, more than just 40. It needs to be somewhere in the in the range of four, 400 to 600. Um, and again, it, it doesn't have to all come from most of the cities, whether it be from uh, small, small towns in Virginia to there was a, a, a guy, a mayor out of Trenton, Tennessee. He had had his buddy who's a home builder and he said, hey, I'll give you this land for free. You just can't raise the prices or sell for anything above 130 or above $150,000. I also have all that contact information. I know you guys have done your work on um, community land trusts, but uh, I can speak further. I used to be an appraiser for affordable housing my first job at a college. But the point is um, there are communities across the U.S. that are doing it. They're still doing it smaller scale. Um, I also... Oh, what what community? I'm currently, so I'm up in Parkville, um, Weatherby Lake. My brother passed away two years ago, and then my mom um, had an injury with her knee. So they got me to kind of accept that California, as much as I loved it out there, um, they needed to get me back home. So Weatherby Thank Lake you, and Platt, Nancy. Um, yeah, Unfortunately, that is three minutes. So we're going to have to move on to somebody else, but I appreciate it. And if you have anything else you want to add, we have a comment form online too. We're happy to follow up afterwards to talk more with you too. So Thank you. Um, comment period is now open for those who have joined late. So if there's any, um, comments you would like to add, um, please put your name and organization and state it at the beginning of your comment and put it on the sheet of paper after you've finished. Um, we do have three minutes for public comments and you're only allowed to speak once. So. Hi, I'm Warren Adams Levitt. I'm with Community Housing of Wyandotte County. Um, we're doing a, a number of things in Wyandotte County to lower the the sale price or the purchase price of homes to first-time home buyers, including a land trust, um, and also looking at low-cost financing and a whole lot of strategies. Um, I, I, I it is necessary for Johnson County to be doing the same. And the housing in Wyandotte County and the em, employment in Wyandotte County and Johnson County work as part of a regional system, um, and which includes Eastern Jackson County, but even more so between Wyandotte and Johnson. So I applaud this. And I, I think the more that you can get a more um sophisticated conversation about housing needs and class uh economic class in johnson county it's going to help us as well so thank you All right. Is there anyone else who would like to offer comments on this application? Seeing none, this concludes the public hearing and we are now adjourned.